Mobile Suit Gundam and its many iterations are some of the most popular anime of all time, and it's no surprise that over the past three plus decades, there have been a plethora of video games released based on the franchise. From mediocre to good to even great, there are some fantastic Gundam games out there and some that I personally wasn't a huge fan of. But for me, one game and one game only stands out above the rest. And for this one, we're kicking it back all the way to 2001 with the PlayStation 2 title, Mobile Suit Gundam Zeonic Front. Now, what makes Zeonic Front stand out above the rest, you might ask? The PlayStation 2 era of Gundam games was really the golden age for video games based on the franchise. There were over 25 Gundam titles released on the console, and those included some absolute bangers. Journey to Jaburo, Federation vs. Zeon, Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam. Some folks are even big fans of the Dynasty Warriors Gundam releases with their huge rosters of playable characters and endless waves of destruction. Although honestly, these really weren't for me. Trust me, I get the appeal of mowing through wave after wave of helpless Zakus, but that's not really what the spirit of Gundam is all about in my opinion. Outside of the PlayStation 2, there are a couple of other titles that really stand out as noteworthy that I'd like to mention. Gundam Side Story 0079 Rise from the Ashes on the Sega Dreamcast has perhaps some of the most interesting gameplay, putting you right in the cockpit of a mobile suit, and From Softwares, yes that's right, the From Software we all know and love, Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn on the PlayStation 3. Both of these are also top 5 games in my opinion that deserve to be on anyone's list to try out. So what makes Ionic Front so special compared to the dozens of other Gundam games out there? Well, buckle up and get comfortable in the cockpit of your Zaku cause it's gonna take a good bit of explanation to plead my case. To start off, we first need to understand when the game takes place and that is in the year 0079 of the Universal Century timeline. If you're familiar with the show, you'll know that this is when the original anime takes place, featuring Amuro, Shar, Sela, and the gang. Zeonic Front isn't the only game that features this time period, and it isn't the first to let you experience operating the infamous Zaku or other mobile suits from the Principality of Zeon's arsenal. But what it does do fantastically well is put you in the shoes of somewhat ordinary Zeon pilots experiencing the war, albeit from a slightly different perspective, as the One Year War progresses. You get to experience the back and forth swings of power from the Xeon perspective as the white base, Gundam, gun cannon, and crew are pulled into and ultimately swing the balance of power in the war towards the Federation. No other game comes close to replicating the feeling of fear that encountering the RX-78 Gundam, otherwise known as the White Devil, in the field of battle was like from the Xeon side. Seriously, all those poor Zaku pilots, Rambaral, and others really had no chance. First, let's talk about the story and campaign. To begin, the game allows you to watch a pre-rendered recap of the events of the anime in order to get caught up if you haven't already watched the show. It does a fantastic job of condensing down all the big events that took place, including the infamous... This is no Zaku, boy! No Zaku! I would highly recommend checking it out if you haven't seen the show. The beginning of the campaign establishes you as a member of the Midnight Fenrir Corps, a covert ops special forces unit that was formed by Commander Cassilia Zabi, daughter of Degwin Zabi, the sole dictator and leader of the Principality of Zeon during the One Year War. Spoiler alert, Shara handles her in a spectacular manner. You progress through a total of 13 missions that span the time span of the One Year War. Each mission has both a briefing that takes place pre-mission and a debriefing post-mission, explaining both objectives and events that took place. Events range from the Xeon takeover of California base, the battle for Odessa, attack on Jaburo, and defense of the final retreat of Xeon. You really feel both the ups and downs of the Xeon campaign on Earth that eventually lead to the Principality of Xeon's defeat. At one point in the campaign, you're even tasked with performing reconnaissance on the White Base and its crew, gathering data on Gundam, Gun Cannon, Gun Take, and the White Base itself. Garma's betrayal is also witnessed by the Midnight Fenrir. <laughs> Hey, Garma, do you read me? Blame this on the misfortune of your birth. What? <laughs> As you progress through the campaign, you unlock new weapons, support equipment, and new playable mobile suits, including different variants of the Zaku 1 and 2, the Goof, and the Dom. You also unlock simulator missions as you progress, allowing you to test out your new equipment in a variety of scenarios where, just like missions, you get graded on your performance after. Hmm, this isn't good. You actually believed I'd be satisfied with these results? I expect in the future you won't disappoint me. We're talking about practice, man. Man, f*** that bitch. Certain simulator missions have unlocks tied behind achieving an S rank, which is the best possible score. 
You can unlock new pilots to play in the simulator, including Char, Garma, and more. Completing the campaign in Xeonic Front isn't the end, though. Once you complete the final mission, you're given the option to restart all over again. You'll immediately notice that the title screen changes from a standard green Zaku to Char's signature red Zaku. Welcome to Ace Mode. This game mode allows you to replay the campaign as well as access the simulator again. Campaign missions are made much harder with enemy tanks and smaller vehicles being replaced with mobile suits. The simulator also gets some love, the biggest addition being the ability to play Federation side simulations in which you get to hop into the cockpit of some of the Federation mobile suits, including the RX-78 Gundam itself, to get to utilize some of that sweet, sweet beam weapon tech. Completing the game on Ace mode and subsequently achieving S rank on various simulator missions can unlock even more Ace pilots to use, such as Amuro, Char, and more. Next, let's discuss gameplay. Xeonic Front's feeling of gameplay is like no other Gundam game I've experienced. It can be brutally difficult at times, especially in the early stages. You see, your plain old run-of-the-mill Zaku doesn't have the fancy armor that Gundam has. If you get caught off guard, even a standard Federation tank can one-shot you with a shot from behind. Hell, if you don't have a shield, it can sometimes happen from the front too. Ground vehicles, helicopters, heavy machine gun emplacements, and especially enemy mobile suits, even if they aren't Gundams, pose a serious threat to you. Also, since you're not playing as a Fetty, you don't have access to all that fancy schmancy beam weaponry. That's right, we have to get things done with good old fashioned leaden explosives. Now, for the most part, this isn't a problem. As a matter of fact, the OG Zaku machine gun is incredibly effective at engaging single or multiple lightly armored targets, thanks to its high rate of fire and fast reload speed. The problem comes when you start to encounter mobile suits or other more heavily armored targets as you progress further into the campaign. You see, with the way damage works in the game, unless you're flanking or attacking an enemy mobile suit from the rear, machine gun fire will be all but completely ineffective, forcing you to either use the aforementioned tactics or switch to heavier weaponry. But, just as the machine gun has its downsides, so does the heavy stuff. Sure, equipping the biggest bazooka you can may allow you to more effectively engage mobile suits, but if that enemy mobile suit has a shield and happens to block an incoming rocket, you're left in an incredibly vulnerable position while you wait a moment before you can take a follow-up shot. God forbid you have to reload that rocket launcher mid-combat. To top it off, engaging light targets with such weaponry is just incredibly inefficient due to the long times between firing and those reload times. Melee combat can be incredibly effective, with weapons like the Heat Hawk and Heat Saber being able to melt through the armor of and one-shot most targets, but getting into melee range against enemy mobile suits can be incredibly dangerous, since if you somehow manage to not kill them, or if your attack is deflected, you leave yourself open to be one-shot by one of their own deadly melee range weapons, the Beam Saber. Melee combat can be made safer and more effective, but a little bit more on that later. Oh, and just a side note, if you're enjoying my content, be sure to like and subscribe for more in the future. The TLDR of combat and its balance in Xeonic Front is, everything has a trade-off. There isn't a single loadout that will just dominate everything. That is, unless you had access to that damn Federation Gundam. Seriously, that thing is OP as f And now, I'm not saying the game is Thanos' vision of perfect balance. For instance, once I unlocked the Dom mobile suit, I found myself using it almost exclusively. Its mobility compared to the other offerings is just unmatched, although it kind of felt like I needed to use it in order to stand the chance against the Federation's seemingly endless supply of mobile suits later in the war. Targeting and actually engaging enemies is also much different here than in many Gundam games. Your ability to detect and hit adversaries isn't just dictated by your ability to visually see the enemy and put crosshairs on them, but rather, it's based on your mobile suit's ability to do so. Three separate sensor modes are available to aid in this. Radar, sonar, and thermal. Each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Is an enemy moving at a high rate of speed? Sonar will be able to detect the noise of their movement. Is it nighttime, or is your opponent in close vicinity, perhaps behind a patch of trees? Thermal will see them. Is the area wide open with nothing in between you and your target? Radar will do the trick. Each of these sensor modes allows you to actually target the enemy with your suit's computer. If you look towards them, when within range, they will automatically lock and you can proceed to open fire. Range and accuracy varies amongst the various weapon types that you can equip. A successful sortie in Xeonic Front begins in the mission planning phase. Prior to each mission, you are given the opportunity to enter team and route setup. Team setup is where your mobile suit and equipment customization takes place. You can swap between different pilots with different mobile suits at their disposal, change weapons, swap default sensor types, and more. Your mobile suit teams also have the ability to equip various pieces of support equipment, from extra armor to smoke grenades, artillery strikes, and my personal favorite, the Dom mobile suit spray beam, which blinds enemies for a short time, allowing you to close the distance gap and use devastating melee attacks. 
Some other unique items, like the GUF's disabling heat rod, are also here. The route setup screen gives you the ability to set custom routes for your teams. Each mission and simulation will give you a predetermined route, but sometimes customization is necessary. You can control exactly where your units will go, what speed they will travel, how they'll engage targets, set up custom waypoints where they'll wait until you execute a battle code, and more. There's no limit to how you can do things here. It allows you to get really creative with how you approach missions. A really cool feature that further helps to pull you into the narrative of the current situation is the advice section of the pre-mission screen. Here you can speak with the different members of your crew and you'll receive dialogue that pertains to the current mission or situation. Sometimes multiple crew members will even have a little back and forth with one another. It's a fantastic little detail that really helps you to get to know your comrades and more. Mobile Suit Gundam Zionic Front is the greatest Gundam game of all time. Don't get me wrong here, there are some other great games out there. Journey to Jaburo, as mentioned earlier, is another one of my favorites, but even it just doesn't deliver the combination of immersion, realism from what you would expect in an actual 0079 Warzone, and customization that Zionic Front offers. I would kill to get a modern remake of this game. Bandai, please. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did you ever get the chance to play through Zionic Front? What mission was the hardest for you? Does Zionic Front rank highly for you on the Gundam game hierarchy? What are some of your favorite games from the franchise? Thank you so much for watching. This is Jarbo Gaming. We'll see you on the next one.